This is everything I made in 2021. <laughs> Club. If you're new around here, I am Maddie, and on this channel, I'm pretty much just making my dream wardrobe and sharing what works for me, and hopefully that inspires you guys to get creative as well. I don't know about you, but I feel like this past year simultaneously felt like it was never going to end, and also like it just never happened. It went by so quickly, and I thought that I would take a moment just to look back on the year that was and go through everything that I've made, try them on, talk through the inspiration behind it, the learnings, and any tips in case you want to give it a go of making it yourself. I do self-draft everything, and I do have the tutorials for all the pieces I'm about to share, so I'll link them below. I think the past year has definitely been my most experimental year of sewing and I really pushed myself to try new things and wearing all these pieces again just reminded me of how proud I am so I can't wait to share them. Hope you enjoy this roundup. If you have a favorite let me know below. First up we have this beautiful tiered dress which honestly I kind of forgot that I made last year and for some reason I thought I'd made it like two years ago. It is such a beautiful flowy number. I would say this is a super easy number if you're just getting into making clothes, if you want to make something like this yourself. I made this from an old curtain that I had laying around and I still have one of the curtains actually hanging up but for some reason this one just got turned into a dress. So, you know, wear it like this for summer so it's nice and breezy or you could layer it up with a turtleneck, a jacket, some tights and some shoes underneath if you are wanting to wear it in cooler months. The second thing I made this year was my bikinis edition. This was my first time using lacquer so it was a bit of a challenge and a bit of a learning curve. I've got my video on it obviously sharing all my learnings and challenges that I faced along the way. I give tips around like types of sewing, the needles, the thread, all that stuff because there was definitely a few hiccups along the way but this is my one piece that I'm currently wearing under a pair of pants. I can wear it to the beach all day and then go to a cafe or something afterwards. Out of the two different prints of material I had I ended up making this one piece a bandeau style top, a triangle style top, some high-waisted pants that comes in this fabric and also this fabric so it's double-sided and then a regular pair of pants that is in this material and this one piece is also double-sided as well. I made it nice and versatile. I've had them for almost a year now and I wear them pretty much as my go-to bikinis and they've survived and I love them and I feel so proud wearing them. I highly recommend trying out making your own bikinis. So rewarding. Every time I get changed my hair just gets a little bit frizzier so let's just ignore that. This is my slip dress. I love it so so much. It features this kind of like front apron style and then dips down to a lower back with these nice thick straps and goes down to these beautiful like side slits down the bottom. I've made countless slip dresses over the years but this is just the first one that I made that I then turned into a video tutorial to share with you guys. There's so many fun ways to experiment with them. I've made ones that are like midi length, midi length, front splits, side splits, kind of like mirroring front and backs or the lower dip backs, more scoop style necks, straight necks. Honestly so many fun different ways to experiment to make it fit your body and your style and that kind of comes down to any with sewing and that's why I love it so much is you can pick and choose details that you prefer for your body and your style and then also you get a unique garment out of it so win-win. This material I found at a thrift shop. I think I got it for a couple of dollars and used up pretty much every last centimeter of it. Such a staple for any wardrobe. I feel it's so easy to dress up or dress down and again layer up or wear on its own depending on the season. This dress I made a part of my button up series where I made a cropped style button up top out of this beautiful shell material. And then also this puff sleeve button up dress and honestly this dress is my dreams come true. Both of the material is from a local boutique shop. They have no online presence. I was just going through there one day and stumbled across this kind of like Matisse inspired material as well as their shell material. One thing I do need to change about this dress is I think I made it a little bit too short so I haven't worn it as much as I would like to but I am going to unpick the bottom and then add some bias binding onto it and hopefully that will just help extend it just that little bit further so I don't feel as self-conscious when I wear it because if I do bend over at the moment my bum is going to be exposed to everyone behind me and this is the top that I made. Different colours, different sleeve finishes and I know that button up shirts seem daunting but honestly they're so easy. Think of it as just like a shirt split down the middle and then you add some buttons in. It can definitely take a bit of like tweaking to get the fit right but overall I feel like it's quite a straightforward number. Now I know aesthetically none of these are linked but the four next pieces I did within one video where we went on a road trip and I found some thrifted numbers that I wanted to upcycle so they are all changed up from what they originally were when I bought them. This dress was like my dream disco number. I'm ready for a dance floor so if the opportunity seems to come up. This dress was originally a slip dress. It had a bit of like a V dip thicker over the shoulder section. It was a midi length and honestly like I don't think there was anything wrong with the initial style if that was your third silhouette but 
I really wanted to experiment with this rouging and the gathered style, kind of inspired from that like with jean dress that you might have seen going around last year. And I'm so happy that I did because this is super cute and I know I would wear it so much more like this. I think it's just fun to reimagine something that you found, say if you like the material but you know the fit doesn't currently serve your wardrobe. I'm thinking of ways of how to evolve it so it better suits your body, silhouette, wardrobe, whatever you want. I'll talk you through the rest of the upcycles from that same video now. I'm not gonna lie, this is what I'm kind of proud of. It was just a regular, plain old boring top. I saw the potential of the material, this like anglaise cotton material. So from that regular top, I cropped it, added the elastic waist in, and then the section that I cut off, I then added onto these sleeves and I just highlighted the like lacy bottom details, flared them out a little bit, and then I had this leftover lace hanging in my scrap pile and I added it to the neck and it goes around to the back and then creates that tie finish, which allows my head to go in, but then also have a nice high neck finish. I think it's beautiful. It kind of is a bit like boho-y. That was like one of my things this year. I really wanted to create more statement tops or tops that I could kind of wear with my pants or my skirts, just because I'm someone who likes simple outfits. I like to grab my jeans and then just grab a nice top and not have to think about it or even lay this underneath my overalls and whatnot. So yeah, very happy with how this turned out. This just used to be a regular button up shirt and then I trimmed the center section, folded that over like a regular hem, cropped the length of it and then used that to create these straps which then just create this like wrap over and tie around waist effect. I made them quite long so I can do like multiple crossovers on my body for that kind of like strappy effect and as well I added these tie sections around the wrist area. Again just a simple number that I knew I could throw on with jeans and not have to think much about which I'm all about. This little strappy number features an elastic waist and then this kind of drawstring effect which is the straps and it meets in the middle and ties up there so therefore I can adjust how tight or loose it is around here and then flows down into a front double split. Like I could wear it to brunch or like a little afternoon drink with the gals or a picnic or many different occasions. Pretty much any linen I get is from the fabric store they're an Australian and New Zealand based shop and they're available online and in person. I just find their linens are so nice. These guys just seem to never disappoint. Next up are the two items that I made just before our big road trip and it was these checkered trouser pants. I've never made anything with this center crotch zip up section and I was pretty excited to try and figure out how to do it and then how it came together. It's got a high waisted fit with these external pockets and then a full length finish with a little side split on the side. I have worn these so much or ever since I made them. They're so comfortable. This checkered print material I got from Spoonflower. The cool thing about Spoonflower is that you can order based on the print that you want and they just print it directly onto then the fabric that you choose so I think that's cool because it minimizes waste they're not just bulk printing and then hoping that people buy it they're printing by the order I think pants in general are quite easy but the whole like adding pockets and the center zip can make it a little bit difficult so just keep that in mind if you do end up making the trouser style I've got linen culottes which maybe are a easier intro if you're just a beginner and then also I made this hat this is one of my bucket hats probably one of my best performing videos because because I guess it came with a free pattern and it's just a fun intro piece for people who are learning to sew and then also just a staple to have in your wardrobe. This one I made I think during a workshop last year which was probably my last workshop. I haven't done them for a while now just because moving in a different direction but it's got the yellow gingham which is from again the fabric store and then I think this is just off cut denims from like thrifted jeans or something. Next up is this jacket that I made out of a picnic blanket which is way too hot to be wearing right now because we're in the middle of summer, but I love it so, so much. And when it was winter, I pretty much had this on every single day. So comfy to throw on and lay it underneath. And then also I lined it with this epic bird print. <laughs> it features kind of like an oversized fit, a bit of a cropped length, these big, big pockets that I can fill up with all my goodies, some beautiful tortoise shell print buttons, this big collar and overall just the ultimate winter essential to have in any wardrobe. I think this one wins the most amount of snapped needles while I was making it, but I love it. I've always been obsessed with gathered tiered midi length dresses, so I thought I would make my own. For this one, I added some puffy sleeves with a elastic finish, multiple tiers which reach down to a midi length, and then it's also got a tie back feature, which ideally in mine, I created it like that so that it could be worn reversible. So with this high neck finish, or with that tie feature at the front. And this was my first dress that I made with pockets, so 
extra practical and cute. I feel like these types of dresses are just so perfect to throw on. You don't have to think much. Wear some cute sandals if you want to wear it, like style it down, or you could wear some chunky sneakers or boots, layer it up with jackets. I feel like anything tiered and gathered like this is probably ideal for any sewing level. But the good thing about the gathered effect is that you can't really see any mistakes and also it doesn't need to fit your body perfectly because it is that kind of like oversized effect. My floral overalls, dungarees, jumpsuit, whatever you want to call it. Okay, just the cutest little number ever. I feel like normally I would probably wear a shirt underneath this, but for today's video, I'm just wearing it on its own. Features the classic like dungaree style where the straps come over from the back to the front and they meet these buttons, which hold it in place. Kind of similar to the slip dress. So there's like apron front style, which goes straight across and then dips below. I could have gone two ways. I could have mirrored it front and back like that, or like I have done, I've just kept it lower back to allow for fun layering of shirts and stuff underneath. It features these big pockets and then it's overall got quite like a loose fit because it is a slip on style so therefore it needs to be able to slip over my widest point and then pop on just a practical number i feel like this material really gives it a cute effect again it's from spoonflower coming into our autumn months i'm probably going to wear it a lot more and layer it up and have a bit of fun so you'll be seeing plenty more of this around anything i make is probably doable for a beginner if you're determined enough you just might hit some hiccups when it comes to like trying to fit it or technical sewing things but I feel like you can all do it. This one is pretty, pretty straightforward. It takes a bit of knowing how to sew and make it fit your body right. All of these crop tops were essentially made from just leftover materials from other projects. They're all within the one video and I tried to show a variety of different ways that you could utilize leftover material to make cute crop tops. The first one is kind of like big scrunchy effect it's got gathered straps a big gathered bust area i think it's really fun then the second one i have is a bit of like a balloon effect where it gathers up the top and then flows out from there and then features the two tie straps the next one is this shirt style where the whole bust has got this gathered elastic in it i have a secret love affair with sharing i think it just turns out so fun and it hugs your body in all the right areas and i finished it off with some nice tie straps and left the bottom section all open so it gives it that nice flared effect and and this one is just a very straightforward crop top. It's pretty much just the top of a slip dress. All of these tops are great beginner ones, but this one is probably just the easiest because it's nice and straightforward. All perfect projects to utilize. There's like awkward bits you have left over from previous projects. I think this has to be my most worn DIY make of the year. It's been on my mind for so long and the day that I bought it to life, we have not been separated since. It's got the dreamiest big balloon sleeves, this wrap finish, but then just quite a nice simple silhouette. And then with the tie around straps, I can also also like tie it to the side or tie it completely around if I want to cinch the waist in a little bit more. It's just such an easy throw on, don't have to think about it much. You know, I've worn it with sneakers, I've worn it dressed up with boots. We love a versatile number which is also quite easy to make. Highly recommend adding this to your sewing list. Again, this is just the celery gingham linen from the fabric store. For some reason I feel like I need like a baking bowl with this. It's like my ultimate like baker woman dress or I'm going to a wedding or high tea. Very ultra feminine. I feel like it's nice to have at least one piece like that in your wardrobe. Now, if you saw the original tutorial for this, you might be thinking, Mads, something's different. And that is because I added sleeves to it. So originally it was like that vintage gathered bust slip dress style and it had open shoulders. And I just found myself not really going to wear it as much because I prefer having my shoulders covered up. So literally on Christmas morning, I added some sleeves onto this and I wore it to Christmas lunch and I love it so much more like this. I have nothing against the other style, but I just know personally, I will wear something more with sleeves than without. And that's just a note to all of you, if you find something just isn't being worn as much as it should be just try and have a little brainstorm and think about how you can adapt it to better fit the rest of your wardrobe and your style and just like what you feel good wearing this one was made from a doona cover that i found at a garage sale i actually got it for free so this dress was free except for the time that I put into making it, so pretty much a whole day. I did also make a silky version of this, which is again in another pile that I am doing some adjustments to, so that will be coming out in another video. Also, you can make it mini. I've gone for a midi length and then added a side split in it. You can add the tight straps like I did around the waist to help like cinch it in around there. So many ways to adapt it to your body and your style. I think this is the turning point of my wardrobe. Everything from now on is probably gonna be toweling. <laughs> if you watch the original tutorial video for this number, you'll know that I scored a heap of towels from a family member who was about to throw them out and I was like we can turn them into something wearable so let's do that. The first thing that I made was this set so it's got high-waisted elastic shorts and I experimented with that like gym short
short style where they kind of overlap and then have the bias binding curved side edges. And then for the top, it is a button up with just the center section clipping together because I like it to be a bit more flowy and open. And then I finished all the edges with bias binding and to match the pants, I've curved this front edge. The bias binding was for two reasons. Aesthetically, I like the finish of it. And then also practically, it helps finish off the edges so that they don't fray because toweling, if you've ever used it before, you'll know that toweling just ends up everywhere. So this helps kind of encapsulate all the edges and stops it from falling apart. I even did all the inner seams as well. I wear these together like this and then I also style them separately depending on the occasion. And surprisingly, you might think toweling could be quite itchy, but I found toweling to be so comfortable. It does soften over time and absorbs all the salt water whenever I go to the beach. Toweling itself isn't that hard to sew, but it is one that you do just have to be mindful of because it gets quite thick in areas. So experiment with your needles you have at home, maybe switch to like a denim needle, get your tension right, have a little play around. I feel like each machine and each towel is different so you just need to adapt and figure out on the day what's going to work best for you. And just remember to take it really slow on the thick parts because I definitely snapped a few needles making this one but it was definitely worth it. Let's just ignore the crinkled linen. This was my second last creation for 2021 and again I have worn this so much ever since I made it. Like I mentioned earlier I've been trying to fill in that little gap of things to be able to just throw on with jeans and skirts and not have to think too much about but also they make a statement and you can like style up and style down. This this number is exactly that. It's got these beautiful balloon style sleeves that come to an elastic armband finish and then I left that little ruffled section at the end to give it that cute dramatic effect every time I say something. Stop. And then the front scoops down to a middle tie-up section and again I've got this frilled bottom section which is pulled together by elastic to fit it to my body and then help it flare out like that. If you can't tell I have a thing for gingham linen. This dusty blue version again is from the fabric store. I think that's all I have to say about it. I love it. That's it. Now let's go to the last piece. You know when you have a vision of something and then you bring it to life and it's exactly how it is? That is this jumper for me. I had it drawn out and I was like you know what these materials and the colors could complement really well together and I'm obsessed with this quarter zip retro style and I feel like it just came together so well. I love it so much and I cannot wait for it to get to cooler days around here. It is definitely not the type of day to be wearing a jumper here. It is so hot. <laughs> Again the towel finish just makes it so cozy and then all of the outer edges and inner seams I've finished with the bias binding and then I've got this zip up section which goes into a high neck and then I made the edges curve upwards just to give it a bit more of a dynamic finish. The pistachio green and the dusty pink with that beautiful like checkered textured finish just goes I like to share the process of self-drafting because it allows you to utilize pieces that you already know you like the fit of or just measure your body and work around that. Ideally that helps make it more accessible than having to buy a pattern, print it, measure it out, do all that stuff and all the tutorials for these pieces will be linked below if you want to try and make your own. Well I hope you have enjoyed watching this roundup of 2021 makes as much as I've had fun filming it, literally spending the whole day running around throwing this stuff on. I've got so many ideas to bring to life this year and I cannot wait to share them all with you. Thanks for tuning in and I I will see you guys in the upcoming videos.